Right, guys, we're back. Okay, um, we're back, and I will just put up the answers for the creditors' recon, and um, then maybe just very quickly we could go through to the cash budget. And uh, do you remember your teachers have the memo? So I'm not going to spend too much time on the different kinds of questions or how they expect us to answer the question. Um, but as far as possible, we want to expose you to how it can be answered and what they expect of you. But we're also very mindful of the time that we have left. So now remember the session is from 11 to 12.30. And I really wanted us to get started on the balance sheet. However, I'll, I'll go through um, the budget very quickly and maybe just put up the answers for what you should have answered or the questions that they asked in that they asked in the, the second part of it. Okay, because remember, with each of these, you're going to have to answer questions here and there. And um, we just need to make sure that we know how we're going to get maximum marks. Okay? So, if you look at the creditors' And then if we look at um, if we look at the next question, it says refer to information D. So if we go to information D and we look at what they gave us there. Is that during an internal audit, the auditor noticed the following account in the creditor's ledger. Okay, so there was an invoice that was credited to the, the creditor. This is a different creditor, okay? But it means then that it was discovered at an EFT payment of 120000 So you can see there was an invoice and there was a payment. So an invoice means that the business bought from somebody. The payment means the business paid for it. So in other words, the... resale in the business. So now what did they discover? Further investigation by the internal auditor revealed that this business is not operational and that Frank Adams is a close relative of the accountant of Kaya Stores. Oh my goodness. I smell it at. So, what does this mean? That And how many marks are we getting for this? Two marks each, and then how it could be prevented. Okay, so just very quickly, two benefits of using EFTs. So even though there was an EFT made, it's supposedly safer. Okay, but, um, so if we look at two points there, it's fast, no queues, it's cheaper, there's lower charges, it should be able to um, reduce theft. The comfort of your home. Um, it's supposed to be safe, 
And there's usually, you can print a proof of payment or there's a notification. So, any one of those. Okay, so you can see how they can ask you simple questions that are almost self-explanatory, but those are the kinds of answers. The fraud should never have occurred. Explain why it feels this way. Um, the accountant, because if you read the, the if you read the brief there, Frank Adams, who the EFT was made to for this business, revealed that the business is not operational and that Frank Adams is a close relative of Kaya Stores. So this is also what we could call a ghost creditor. Ghost meaning it's there, but it's not really there. But it's also defrauding the business. The accountant generally is a trusted employee. And we rely usually on the integrity of the person. So they say, the accountant, generally regarded as a senior employee, is expected to be responsible, professional, trustworthy. So it was a deliberate action, nepotism, because it was a, this creditor was a close relative, to defraud the business. Um, the management should be aware of the potential for fraud of this nature. Preventative control should have been in place. Okay, so there you get an idea of how they expect you to answer that kind of thing. Explain how it could have been prevented. And again, any two points. Could have appointed people to authorize, or two people to authorize the EFT. So it's division of duties. One person serves as a check on another. Screen suppliers properly to ensure that they're reliable, credible organizations. Ensure that they actually exist. Um, do character checks on newly appointed employees as a reference. Thank notifications, either SMS or OTPs, a one-time PIN to the owner or supervisor for all bank transactions. Regular random supervision or checking of accounting records. Okay, and there we have creditors recon. And again, remember with reconciliations, we could test, we could be tested on creditors recon, it could be debtors recon, it could be debtors age analysis. Any of those reconciliations with debtors and creditors, just not bank for this year. All right, so that takes care of um, creditors' recon. Let's see if we can um, just spend the next few minutes on the budget, and then we'll see if we can get at least an hour in of the balance sheet. Okay, so that it doesn't feel like we're leaving things hanging. So if we go to um, the cash budgets. Okay. Um, let's just have a look here. If we look at what we must know with cash budgets. Okay, it's only cash transactions, no credit transactions or non-cash items. For example, bad debts, depreciation, profit or loss on sale of asset. Any kind of transaction like that does not affect the cash budget. Okay? Um, together with cash budget, we can be asked for debtors collection, creditors payment. So with debtors collection, it's only on credit sales. 
So remember, total sales equals cash plus credit. Okay? Um, and the same way creditors' payment is only on credit purchases. So total purchases, again, is equal to cash plus credit. So sometimes um, we're able to work out or they give us the total sales or the total purchases and they give you the percentage of either cash or credit and then you've got to work it out. As long as we remember, when we collect from debtors, it's only on credit sales. When we collect from creditors, it's only on credit purchases. And again, if they don't give us purchases, okay, but they give us cost of sales, then cost of sales equals purchases. Okay. Again, if we use the fixed base stock, and most of the time they would tell you that the business uses the fixed base stock system or method, then it means whatever stock they start off with in the month is what they end off with in the month. Okay, so whatever they've then bought for the month, they've sold. Or whatever they've sold for the month, they also bought. So sometimes they don't give you the purchases or the cost of sales, but they give you sales. And they give you the markup. Then sales minus your markup gives you your cost of sales. Or you use the cost of sales formula if they give you your sales in order to get the total purchases. Okay, because remember we said if we can work out cost of sales, <coughs> sorry, if we can work out cost of sales, then it's actually, we're actually working out the purchases. But again, that would be total purchases. So if they only give you information for sales, then we must use and, and the profit markup, then we must use that information in order to get to the cost of sales or the total purchases. Okay. And then if they do ask for projected income statement, whatever goes in your income statement goes in your projected income statement. Okay, all cash transactions, regardless of whether they are um, receipts for assets or payments for assets or liabilities, it all goes in the cash budget. But in the projected income statement, it's only income and expenses. Projected income and expenses. All right. So... What do they ask us for in the cash budget? So if we look at, um, <coughs> if we look at the question paper there, okay, it says, insert the relevant amounts for each transaction below in the appropriate columns for the following cash budget and projected statement of comprehensive income. So, monthly telephone costs are expensive, expected to be 4200 So, in the cash budget, that would be a payment. In the projected income statement, that would be an expense. So, if we need to, if we're looking at um, if we're now looking at all of these, 3.1.1. <coughs> A three-month advertising contact for 6,000 will be paid on the 1st of July. 2,000 of this relates 
to the next financial year. So, what do we have? Six thousand will be paid on the first of July. So that means it's going to be a payment of that six thousand, the whole amount. However, if two thousand is for the next financial year, then it means as an expense in your projected income statement, you're only going to have four thousand because two thousand is for the next financial year. On First of July, 45,000 will be invested in a fixed deposit at 8% interest. The interest is not capitalized and um, is received at the end of each month. So 45,000 will be invested. <coughs> so we're going to invest the 45,000. So that would be a payment of 45,000. But we're also going to receive the interest. So that would be a receipt. And for the projected statement of compliance income, it's only going to be an income. That 45,000 doesn't affect this. So that means there we're going to have 300. Then the last one, budgeted Cash sales, 23. So the income year would be, because that's your sales in your statement of comprehensive income, and then they say the cost of sales, that's an expense in your okay that's it so now if we look at the creditors payment sheet <coughs> and again remember we said that's only based on credit purchases. They give us the credit purchases and do they tell us how um, payments are made to creditors? If we look at information E, 40% settled in the month of purchase in order to earn 5% discount, 50% in the month following, and 10% in the second month after the purchase. So we have to Complete the creditors' payment schedule for the budget period ending 31 July. Okay. So, <clears throat> and again, is anything in that? 40% of March would be in March. 50% of March would be in April. 10% of March would be in May. So there's nothing else there. If we look at April, fifty percent in May and ten percent in June, which means there's nothing in July. So now if we look at May, so it's only this year that we're looking at. So May, there must have been 40% in May, less than 
50% in June. So now of that May's credit purchases, there would only be 10% in July. 10% of 171,500 is 17,150. 40% minus 5% in June. So how much of June would be collected in July? it would now be 50% of that amount. So 50% of that gives you 89250. So for July, they don't give us the credit purchases. Can we work out the credit purchases? And how would we get to that? Remember we said that if they give us the sales and the cost of sales. So if we have the budgeted sales for July. And then we look at Okay, so what are we looking at first? We're taking our sales figure Okay, so we're looking at that And we're going to work out our cost of sales Okay, so what is our because remember we said if they give you sales in the markup, then and we can work out cost of sales, cost of sales is total purchases. So it's that amount times what is the profit markup that they gave us? Eighty percent on cost. So it's times a hundred divided by one eighty. That will give us cost of sales, isn't it? So your 936,000 times 100 divided by 180, 520,000. So that is your cost of sales or your total purchases. Okay? Then they say the business maintains a fixed stock based level. Stock sold in a month is replaced in the same month. The cash purchases are 65% of total purchases. So if cash purchases, and remember that's your total purchases. If cash purchases is 65%, what is credit purchases then to make up the total purchases? 35%. Because 65% plus 35% is equal to 100%. So that 520,000 times 35% must now give you credit sales, credit purchases, sorry. So 520,000 times 35%. Bob's your uncle, what do you get? 182,000? Okay, so where does that go? So that is what we have here. And then, this is July. We must work out what do we collect in July. And what did they say according to the schedule? Forty percent 
in the month of purchase to earn 5% discount. So 182,000. times 40% is equal to that times your 40% equals 72,800 minus 5% must give you this amount. <coughs> or times 95%. This then is 6, 9, 1, Creditors. And if we add that up, one seven five five six up. okay with that and again maybe if, if your teacher shares the memo with you you can just go over it slowly again but I'm just going to do the next calculations and then um, we're going to go on to the, the balance sheet because again the questions um, with your permission hopefully your Teachers can just explain to you how um, or what we need to look at. Okay, but um, I hope you don't mind that I'm, I prefer to spend time on, on just showing you how to do the calculations and then um, the commenting we can always work on. And hopefully if, if we're looking at that last dash, which is just before you write paper one and paper two, those are the kind of um, exam techniques that we would be looking at. About a few minutes, and then we're going to start on the balance sheet. Let's just look at those calculations. Um, the cash budget so if we look at the information that they give us and this is what you have in front of you okay, they say the rent income is expected to increase by 9% so rent income if June is 15,500 we should now to work out that ok and then the business has negotiated a loan which will be received on the 1st of June. So that's what we must work out. Interest at 13.5% per annum is payable at the end of each month commencing from the 30th of June. In other words, to work that out, we must now use this interest on loan. But remember, this is the per month, so we need to, in order to get to what the original amount of the loan is, we first need to know what is the total interest going to be for the year. Then we can use that figure and the interest rate to work out this figure. Okay, and then... Um, bonus and a part-time assistant and will earn 50% of the monthly amount applicable to the others. So that we just need to separate some of those things. And then um, Martin earns an annual salary of that. The business also employed a second marketing manager 
Safely for the entire year, she will receive an interest an increase of 8% on her salary from the 1st of June. So we must use the marketing manager's annual salary to work out the monthly salary and then get the other person's salary from that. Okay. Let's see how quickly we can do that. All right. So let's look at how we get... Um, the rent income. Okay, I think that's the most straightforward of the lot. So, what is the rent income for in June? It happens to and be the first it just happens to be plus. Um, what did they say? Um, Nine percent. Five. Now there's different ways of working that out. If on your calculator you just have plus nine percent, it'll give you that figure. Or you can say fifteen five hundred times one point oh nine. We'll give you the same thing. Or you can work out 15,000 times 9%. Gives you 135. 15,500 gives you 1395. Or 15,500 plus 1395. Any of those calculations will give you this. Okay, as long as this is what you end up with. Then for the amount of the loan. 3150 is the monthly amount. So times which is 37,800. Um, divided by so that's your total interest if it then so 37,800 divided by 13.5% Two hundred and eighty thousand. Because remember an amount, that amount times thirteen point five percent will give you that. So if we now invert the fraction to get that, it's that divided by that to give you that. Okay. Then, okay, then if we look at the salaries, the business employs five sales assistants on the same salary. Okay, so that means that um, 41,000 is then for five of them. But now they're saying three of them will receive an annual bonus of 75% on the earnings. So three of the five. Okay? So if we're looking at 
the 41,000 times 3 of the 5 will get 75% of the earnings. Times 0.75. So that's one way of doing it. So let's see what we get. 41,000. In other words, that gives us 18, so the 450. Part-time sales assistant and will earn 50% of the monthly amount applicable to the others. So what is the monthly amount that each one gets? Divided by 5. So, here we're trying to work out what they're getting as an increase. But that 41,000 is divided by 5 equals 8,200, which each one gets. Okay, that 41,000 is for 5 people. Here we're just working out what the 3 of the 5 is going to be additional bonus. Okay? So, if we look at what the other person is going to earn, it's half of the monthly amount. So, what is the monthly amount that the others are getting? 8,200. Because it's 41,000 divided by 5. So, half of the 8,000 what the new person is going to be getting. Which means, um, if you look at the other workings, it's now 8,200 divided by 2, or times 50%, is 4,100. So if we're looking at the total salaries, we're looking at the 41,000, Plus the eighteen four five zero plus the four thousand one hundred, which the new assistant will get, and that will give us the total day. So how did we get? How did we get the eighteen four five zero? They said three of them will receive an annual bonus of seventy five percent of their earnings. So. That's their salary. Three of them, so three out of the five, times three over five, times 0 0.75 would give us that. So that's the increase that they're going to get as their bonus besides their monthly salary. Then the other employer, the extra or additional employee, they said earns 50% of the monthly amount applicable to others. What is others? The other two that didn't get the increase. So the 41,000 to get how much each one got before the increase, it was that divided by 5 gives you 8,200. So 50% of that amount or half of that amount is what the new employee is going to get. Okay, so if we add all of that together, <coughs> 6, Three, five, five, five. Okay, and then salaries, the last one, salaries of the marketing manager. So what are they saying? The marketing manager earns... An 
annual salary of 720,000. The business also employed the second marketing manager and she will receive an increase of 8% on her salary. So, um, Seven hundred. Gave you June and July. We must work back to what it was going to be in May. So seven hundred and twenty thousand divided by twelve to get the monthly amount. Because remember, we're looking at the monthly budget. So, for the one that they gave us, divided by 12 is equal to your 60,000. Okay? Now, they gave us 98880. So, if we minus... 